Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Blake Connolly. If you don't already, mean, already know me, if you haven't watched the first episode of Setting Up Hangfire, I highly recommend you do so before getting into this. It will help you a lot, help you get it all set up into your app. Um, I have just struggled immensely with an issue that um, I realized was because of my naming conventions. Um, so if you're setting this up, make sure that your naming conventions show that uh, if we open our Solution Explorer, don't specifically say hangfire.com. Core that messed mine up for some reason. Maybe they use the same naming convention. I don't know, but um, just something to keep into into account. So what we're going to do here now that we have it set up and we have it implemented into our application, we're going to start using it and actually build some events into the system. So let's go for it. And we're going to follow the same architecture that I show in my um, .NET Core Clean Architecture video, where we add a new project. Uh, yep, we'll add a new project with a class library. We're going to call this Hangfire Demo Demo. Dot core. Cool. So this is our core, and we're going to go ahead and delete this file. We're going to add a new folder called demo, and we're going to create a new class called demo service. Make this public. We will go ahead and add an interface. Boom. And we'll go I demo service. Cool. We're also going to create a task called public void run task. Or actually, we'll do run demo task. And we will just do console.write line. This is a task that has been ran from the demo service. Okay, awesome. Uh, we have one too many parentheses there. Do we? Yep, yeah, cool. We're also going to add this to our interface. Great, so we should be good there. Um, we're also going to demonstrate just really getting it all set up so you understand how it goes from being um, initially set up in your startup to um, creating it in a service and then calling it through an API, kind of the full loop of, of using Hangfire. Um, if you already know how to do this all, I like to show it anyway, it's just so the people who don't can really see the full process of it because I think that's something that is um, you know left out a lot in .NET videos and programming videos in general is the full the full solution, the full implementation of it. So now we've got our service, we're going to use dependency injection so that we can access it in our controller. Scoped, I we'll go here, I demo service and demo service. Boom. Oops. Okay. And we should be able to import this now so we can reference um, our other project here, reference Hangfire Demo Core. That should load. Okay, that's great. That's working. So now in our Hangfire setup, uh, typically this would be your API uh, project since you're accessing your API. We're going to go ahead and create a new controller. And we're just going to call this, we'll call it Hangfire Controller. Let it build, let it create, do all of its magic here. Sometimes it can take a little while when I'm recording because it's using a lot of my system system power. Um, okay, so route, we're going to say this is API, and we'll do slash hangfire. And we're going to call this index. I always like to specify these. This can be, uh, yeah, just regular git. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to pull in our service for that. Boom. We're going to create a new property here, private uh, I demo service, demo service, cool. And with dependency injection, we will pull that in. Cool. And assign it. So now we have access to the demo service using our dependency injection. So what we can do now is we can say this dot demo service dot run demo task, and this will create. Um, that, that will actually do your console write line. So ideally what we're going to be doing with this controller is we're going to be creating a new event in Hangfire. Um, so we don't actually just want to call this like that. We're going to want to pull up the Hangfire docs and discuss how you can actually use it. Um, there's a couple different methods you can use. You can use a fire and forget, delayed, recurring, or continuations. Um, most of the time you're going to be using a recurring just because it's something that recurs over time. If you want to see the other ones, feel free to take a look at those. It's really like you can delay an event past um, initially when you when you fire it off. You can have it fire in um, you know, an hour or a day, a month, whatever it is. 
Um, you can add, you know, file, fire and forget, kind of just like you set it up to run and then you move on to the next step. Um, but we're going to just focus on recurring because that's the, that's the most used implementation of it. So, all right, recurring job, if we copy and paste that there, it's going to auto import everything we need. This is the function we want to run here. So we are going to move that in place of where the console right line is. And we'll remove that. And so this, what this is doing, it's creating a new recurring job. It's adding or updating it. So if we were to specify a name on this, what we could do is um, say this is a demo job. Every time you hit this API controller, it would not create a new job. It would just update the previous job. So if you wanted to only have one job for updating things, but over time you needed to um, dynamically change how the job was firing or what was included in the job, um, you could simply just call add or update demo job and pass in your new function or method that you would want to call um, to update that job instead of actually creating a new one, deleting the old one. So it's pretty handy. Um, I usually always attach names to it unless it's something like a, uh, a user-based job where it has to be on a user by user basis, something like that. You can um, leave the name out and it'll generate a random uh, GUID for it. So um, now that we have that, that's great. We've got our um, name on there. We've got the function we want to call and we're calling it daily. Let's go ahead and call this uh, minutely. I don't think that's a word, but they seem to use it. So uh, what we're going to do is just return an OK. I know this is not proper exception handling, but it'll work for now. Don't hate me for it. Um, OK, so now once we run that, we should be able to run our API. And things should work smoothly. We'll actually watch to see how this is created. And from here, after you have all this stuff ready, you should be able to really create um, pretty much any type of recurring job and get your whole recurring uh, your event system set up so hang fire great we've got that there nothing is coming in we're gonna go ahead and hit our API now so our endpoint is whoops API slash hang fire and it's a get so we should be able to we should be able to hit it just by doing API slash hang fire We will do a uh, breakpoint, make sure we get there. Great, we got there. And we made it through. Great. So now you should see in our recurring jobs, we now have a list called demo service .run demo task. So this is showing what's going to happen. Um, and if we actually want to, we can fire it. Let's open up our console so you can watch this. Um, I'll try to put them side by side so you can see it better. This is a task that has been run from the demo service. So this job just ran. You can see the status of all your jobs as well under job the job section, and you can see succeeded here. Um, it allows for a lot of really good debugging, so you can see actually what was fired off, um, you know how how it was ran, what the state was, how long it took, um, all that good stuff. And then if we wanted to, we could fire this again. And if you'll notice down here, you'll see that um, you know you'll see. Yep, it's kind of it's kind of in there. I know it's a little hidden in there. But uh, this is a task that has been ran from the demo service. So I know that may be a little small. I don't know if I can increase that easily, but that's how it runs. Um, you can tr trigger them manually. And if you go to your dashboard, um, you can actually see. I don't know if it's going to show it to us yet, but um, if we were to bring this into our other tab, we can watch it fire off real time, which is pretty cool. Let's go to our jobs. Trigger now. You'll see that little jump right there. That's our successful job. So that's exactly how you set up your commands in Hangfire and how you can actually use it as an event queue. Um, you can use this for all different types of applications and uh, use cases. There are tons of ways to use it. It's extremely useful. Um, I just said useful like five times, so ignore me whenever I uh, get really redundant like that. <laughs> but anyways, that's how you set it up, guys. Um, that is the most basic version of getting it integrated with SQL Server, getting it into a service, calling it with an API controller, um, all that good stuff. So you should be able to use it just fine. That's pretty much going to conclude my uh, lessons for using Hangfire. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to throw them in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer them. If I need to make more lessons, I will gladly do so to help you guys out. Um, but we're definitely going to have some more C-Sharp videos coming up next, so stay tuned for those. As always, guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like the video um, just to get it out there even more so I can do more videos. But anyways, thank you guys. I will see you next time. Have a good one.